Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode. Today we're taking a look at Hogwarts Legacy, uh, taking a, a rewind to when we had this leak three months ago, a WB employee released some information on the game and some of it was accurate, therefore I believe it, there's truth to it and some of the other stuff that we might be able to believe too, so I thought it'd be interesting to look back, see what was true, uh, see what wasn't and, and then also have a think about what's coming. We're also going to be taking a look at an article um, so Hogwarts Legacy, there was a, uh, Avalanche did a feature piece on PlayStation Blog. Uh, so we've got some information from, from that. The head of story, Adrian Ropp. Right, but first, let's, let's start with the leak. Hogwarts, a dark legacy. This person claimed to be a WB employee. They worked for marketing and the plan this year is to show off the game among others. Here is what it knows that this person knew about the game. It won't be called Harry Potter or anything. Correct. Instead, it's called Hogwarts. Correct. A dark legacy. Legacy. Correct. The dark bit. It may have been a working title. It may have been a case that this changed. They played out the game and they thought it would be you know, a Hogwarts Legacy, rather than maybe it does have really quite dark elements to it, and they wanted that to be more of a choice between you know good and evil and a balanced choice. Um, whether the dark bit referred to the other dark wizards that we're going to be facing along the way, who knows? But it's clearly clearly has some merit if it's if they got Hogwarts Legacy correct. So. Bits of information, you get to customise your character, it's not super detailed, but the models look good. Male or female, you're a fifth student year at Hogwarts who transfers from another wizard school. Don't know why, but it's major plot detail later in the game. You play through all the way through graduation, and then in your first year as an aura, you also get to determine if your character is Muggleborn, Pureblood or Halfblood. The decision will provide unique dialogue and minor quest options. Okay, so we know that... In Hogwarts, the um, selection of students that we have are different in terms of what they wear. There's no solo robe that everybody has to wear with just the different colours of the house. So next up it says, based on your decisions you make regarding your character in the creation screen, this determines the house that you get sorted into. Now, this this will be really, really contentious subjects. Some people would like to probably choose to get the house chosen. Some people will want it to be random. Uh, I'm in the random one, but I say random, you know, to be able to select, do a quiz, or it may be that you select certain traits that give certain abilities, but they are more associated with one member of uh, one of the four houses. Um, each four houses has a unique quest line. However, regardless of the house you're in, you can't side with the villain. That doesn't mean you'll make good decisions all the time, and we're told that there are major moments in the game that can result in deaths of important characters based on your decisions. Now that's really good to hear. <laughs> Not that people will die, but that there are consequences to your decisions. I think that's exciting. Um, the game takes place after Harry Potter series and after his children go to and graduate from Hogwarts. I was told a main antagonist is not Voldemort level, but is formidable and former Death Eater. There are multiple antagonists in the game. Expectations for multiple sequels, your character has a set last name and everyone will call him her by. So they will have a set surname. This is false then. So the game takes after the Harry Potter series, after his children go to and graduate from Hogwarts. That would be in the 2000s. We're in the 18th century. Wrong. Um, you just lost some credibility there. Multiple book characters make appearances. However, they are keeping this under wraps. Expect Harry Potter to make an appearance at some point. Not likely. Not, not likely at all. Unless time travel is a thing. Um, that's not going to be happening. Skill tree is robust, five different branches to focus your character's magical abilities as well as perks that can unlock after so many amount of points in a tree. We've shown a perk that allows your character to slow combat for a brief moment, another perk that allows you to control monsters for a certain amount of time. There is also good evil points. If you veer towards evil, you can learn more powerful spells. However, you cannot learn any major forbidden ones. Unfortunately, there's a classroom assignment that you have different difficult puzzles, which can provide significant bonuses to your character. Okay, so the skill tree makes sense that we would have some form of skill tree uh, within an RPG, which is kind of what you can expect. I do like the fact that you can veer towards good and evil, which it does point to in the trailer, saying that your choices 
will make will shape the future of Hogwarts its legacy. Uh, story and combat us are a slow burn, but we're told the game builds up to some insane moments. Combat is fluid, but relies on timing and tactics. You cannot button mash and win. Your character has so much energy at any given time. You fight other wizards, creatures, etc. There's also a dual system for rivals, which would be awesome if that is true. In non-missions, your character doesn't reload from a previous save. Instead, wakes up in the infirmary with some temporary negative effects. Like it. I like that idea. Um, I, I, I personally, or the more, maybe more frustrating, I like the idea of you know you go back to the start or you go back. There is a severe consequence or annoyance in dying, which kind of makes you want to stay alive. A reimagined version of the Nemesis system used in Shadow of Mordor games is the one is in this one. It's not as robust as those games in terms of quantity, but instead a very detailed and few rivals it generates. It creates rivals for your character. The main rival is randomly generated via this system. He or she will be unique to each playthrough, however voiced by the same voice actors. This rival can be beaten, killed, or made an ally based on your decisions made in the game. It's quite a descriptive, um, you know, explanation of how the, the, the you know, random rivals will work in the game. Again, no evidence of whether that is or isn't true. Lots of exploring, four different hubs that are extremely detailed and offer lots of non-playable character interactions, secrets and quests. So Hogwarts, Hogsmeade and the Ministry are the three I know of. Not sure what the fourth one is. Most of the game takes place at Hogwarts. However, you will have missions in some surprising locations. At the end of the game, the end of the game takes you to a place in London where you work for the Ministry. So... We do know Hogwarts is confirmed, obviously. Hogsmeade is confirmed in the trailer. We saw nothing of the Ministry. And fourth location, we did see a fourth location, and that was in some ruins of some sort, uh, whether that is at Hogwarts or whether that is when we go into the open world. So this says there's, there's only gonna be four different hubs and lots of exploring. I feel like this is too simplified of what the game is. I reckon it'll be a lot more open world than we would expect from, from just that description. Game gets extremely dark and is not made for children, so it won't be super kid friendly, like it. This game is more for fans who read the books and are now older, expect a T and possibly M rating for the violence and dark themes. Quidditch is in the game and is very detailed. You can play every year. House points are in the game. A card is also there. Card game is also there that we're told is as detailed as Gwent. Love it. Love it. I like little side games. Love Gwent. That was such a good game. I probably spent a lot of my time playing Gwent in The Witches. Probably equal to amount playing the, the quest line. Um, Quidditch is, is in the game. We saw the in the trailer that somebody, you know, Accio's their broom up and is ready to fly off. They had the house colours on the broom. So... It only makes sense that we're going to see Quidditch in the game. The Quidditch pitch was at Hogwarts. We saw that in this, the beginning of it. Um, so that's that looks like it's it, there's some truth to that. How detailed it is, that is still in question. And I'm hoping it is as detailed as this suggests. You play as a different character at some point in the game. I believe it's the main antagonist, but not. I don't know. It's only for a few missions. And the developers said it would be very fun and have a big surprise. Okay, I like the idea so that we're not following just the same person. We might have some experience of, of being other people and seeing how they inter interact with the, the storyline or interact with our storyline, the main one. Um, 13, two left. Missions are as the aura, as, as the aura were inspired by L.A. Noir's investigations. However, there isn't many, not sure if the, if the actual amount. There isn't many, not sure of the, I'm guessing that's meant to sure of the actual amount. And then finally, there are romance options. Your character can eventually marry someone and they will be your spouse in the end of the game. There are also companions that go on missions with you and you can command. Expect a trailer, then gameplay before August. Correct, trailer did come first. Showed some gameplay, but not in terms of, you know, solid gameplay. It, it looked, you know, from a different camera angle, not seeing all the options on the screen so there was none of that so we can now expect gameplay if this is to be true um it did say before august which i mean it wasn't far off a month is not a huge delay of a trailer to come out you know the the it's it's pretty 
pretty common within game development that things get pushed back and especially with coronavirus this was three months ago maybe expectations were at that point that it would be released before then but difficulties may have made it more difficult to uh made it made it hard to bring it out in that time schedule and it says the game is expected to be released around june of 2021 so we're going to be waiting a while for it you know nine months if this is to be true 10 months if it's if the, the game is also on that behind schedule so that's what they say that's what we 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 know to have some merit now it definitely you know if if it was right on a lot of points um but what does the head of story avalanche adrian rock say so sometimes this guy stops to appreciate this real nature of the of my story meetings how should this character's voice change when they drink polyjuice how do house house elves live are graphorns omnivores they, there are types of questions that drive us towards their authenticity and the types of questions you only think to ask when you've stepped in your or steeped yourself in the law or steeped yourself in the law developing hogwarts legacy avalanche is a team endeavor every department ensures the immersive storytelling works best when it's woven through the dna of the project so hard to do with harry potter seeing as it's so you know spans across years in terms of the information that we know trying to meet canon is not an easy feat What's more, we take seriously the responsibility of contributing new content to the beloved Wizarding World franchise. The Porky Games labels give us the opportunity to return to Hogwarts during a different era. We're always asking ourselves, how can we draw from the rich library of characters and creatures and themes? And imagine how those details would influence the school more than a century before Harry Potter's arrival. Who was the headmaster? What challenges did students face? What influenced their society before Tom Riddle and before Newt Scamander? I like to say that what we are giving fans is something in a familiar in a way they've never seen. Love it. We embrace what we know and challenge ourselves to expand upon it. Nearly headless Nick would have been floating around, loyal and cheerful as ever. The Forbidden Forest was still forbidden, and homes to centaurs not likely keen on human interaction. Goblins were around, but this lot certainly didn't work at Gringotts. The village of Hogsmeade was there, and Ollivander has been making ones since 382 at BC. Often, the difficult task is choosing which details we aren't going to explore. This is an exciting time to develop immersive experiences. The new opportunities provided by the PS5 are literal game changers. With innovative, high-definition graphics, a player can practically feel the terror of inferior breathing down, bearing down upon them. Sense the program rumbling beneath, their, beneath them as a herd of angry centaurs surrounds them, even dueling against a deadly dark witch takes on a new level of realism thanks to the controller's ability to imbue sound and touch into every moment. This is a picture of us flying around on the hippogriffs. When the book first came out, I became an instant fan. I see each day the multi-generational appeal these stories have earned. I'm so proud to be part of this amazing journey and very grateful that we can finally share the excitement with the world. This is a labour of love and the real magic comes from the dedication and imagination of a team who wants nothing less than to make this as an authentic and compelling Wizarding World game. Beautiful. Beautifully put. Yeah. Must be some feat delving into law and you know then from that creating a world that needs to be authentic and every Potter fan is gonna just think yep yeah, this is how it could have been would have been um, and I'm excited for it it's gonna be good maybe we'll find more leaks more stuff might come out as it says in the uh, reddit post gameplay will be next which I mean Gameplay would logically be next. Anyway, it's not a difficult prediction to make at this point. But we'll see. Um, that's all for this one. Let me know if you think if, if you think the Reddit post is true. Are you going real? This is a real employee or fake? Real and he just got things wrong because they changed the mind or he didn't have all the information? Or fake? It was just guesswork. Let me know in the comment section below. That is all for this one. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like on the video. It always helps the channel out. Hit subscribe if you want to keep up to date future information that's all for me see you guys soon